Welcome! I hope that you had a nice little break today. Um, welcome to everyone! I see somebody is already waiting for our webinar to start. Let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Eugenia. I have run several web webinars over here on this website and uh, I have been doing a lot of research concerning different kinds of motivation, different kinds of things out there. And you can connect with me through the Facebook or through Gmail or through Instagram. There are some QR codes which you can rewind back after our <clears throat> presentation is going to be. And we will talk a little about what kind of things are there in the motivating of everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome. Oh, hello, yes. So some people are there, some people are putting pluses, great and smiley faces. That's actually awesome. All right. So let's start with the plan that we're going to talk about. Uh, we will talk first things first about what is motivation. What are the two types of motivations and what are the good points of one and what is the other point of, uh, or, and what are the disadvantages of that? Also, we will talk about such a crucial thing, which is what kills the motivation of our students? What are the solutions and what are some tricks that can be done with us? And later you will have, you will be able actually to ask me some questions. However, I will be really glad to see the questions of yours in the chat. That's why I'm looking on the other side. Yeah, so uh, that's just like a little thing there. First things first, again, welcome back. I, you had a great day already today because you had three wonderful sessions. You have three ahead more, and I really hope that you will enjoy all of them and find them useful, of course. So the first question that I have to you, my dear friends, is actually what is motivation in your opinion? You can see this little graph over here. It may give you some ideas. I'll give to you like 10 seconds to think about what is motivation in your personal opinion, like in the classroom, I mean? Like, maybe this is, I don't know, the marks that you're putting, for students, I mean. Yeah, maybe this is something different. And I'm really wondering what do you think in that way? <clears throat> oh, welcome, welcome, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. The reason why they are doing that and the reason what they are doing this part. Okay, that's a good one. Right, any other uh, items there? Ah, the carrot. Yes, it is actually. So this would be the great uh, motivation for them. The praise, of course, the desire to learn, to work with the people out there. Yes, so that's one of them. And. The reason why I'm asking that, because the motivation is actually lying within the little question. We need to remember why is that happening? Why is it like, uh, why do we teach that? Why is it in the class book? Why is it there? That's why we need to remember our whys within us. So, and that will do for this hour webinar. I'm waiting for your questions. Really, I'm just joking because there is much more in our in the motivation in general. Uh, there are not only the things that you have told, it's everything over there, the praise, the carrot, uh, the desire to study, the teaching, the different kind of uh, creativity that is running through their heads and everything, different kinds of ideas. Yeah, of course, some invitations and everything, like little, little praise, little, little prizes even there. But motivation is much, much deeper. A lot of uh, scholars, unfortunately, they um, underestimate the power of motivation and what it is done inside of that. So there are two kinds of them. Actually, I'm pretty sure that you know some of it. And this is kind of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. We will talk about the both ways out there. So extrinsic motivation is actually the one that is uh, coming from outside of the student. You know that absolutely. So examples of extrinsic motivation might be the prizes, the stars, the stamps, the stickers, the food even. The food is like the biggest motivator out there. For the people who are a little bit older, it might be the money, it might be the goal in life, or maybe some gaining of new experiences, or maybe trying to understand something. 
However, in the extrinsic motivation, they do not get the, sometimes they do not get the satisfaction from the process. In the intrinsic motivation, they enjoy the process more actually than even they can get as a result. And this is like really crucial to realize that they are two very different. One of them is actually a bit, uh, can last a bit longer and the other one is a bit shorter. Can you tell me, can you predict please what is like, in, uh, what is longer, what is shorter motivation? Like in your opinion, or maybe you already know, or maybe you have seen this in your practice, in your studies out there. Because to me, it actually has some really surprising results, not according to the uh, psychologists or like physicists that I have been reading about. So there is extrinsic, intrinsic, and what lasts longer? What is like, what can stand the time out there? Of course, it is longer. So intrinsic, there was one answer. Yeah, so, but again, the intrinsic one, it is much longer. It actually, what keeps the person going, it is what what makes the person do some stuff for the, for themselves as they enjoy the process. However, extrinsic motivation can be a little bit more powerful. The person might be a little bit more burnt up for this, not as in the intrinsic motivation out here. Right, so of course, yes, different like kind of praises also can be motivating, especially if we're talking about younger students, I mean like about the fifth, the fourth grade, they are still kind of like kids and they need that motivation like from the outside. Uh, in general, both of them are really important and I would tell you like we cannot separate these two kinds of motivation, we need to combine them. Because if we are giving something like outside, from the our side, like we give them the material, we give them that, we give them this and everything. However, if without the intrinsic motivation, it will last a second, it will last nothing out there. So, uh, we, but we have to be really careful about the extrinsic motivation, because I really like this little thing that I have found, like the teacher isn't explaining to the students, like what is motivation, what kind is that? Extrinsic kind of candies, prizes, and intrinsic is a confidence and self-esteem and stuff, something like what's ruling our people out there. And the student asks, Professor Hill, after a student eats a candy, does it make it intrinsic or does it make it extrinsic motivation? So, that is the case here. So, we need to, must not actually overlay only on one kind of motivation. We need to work with both of them in that way. So, for the teenagers, it's actually like the combination of both. And I really, really want you to see like one little clip of the... Uh, YouTube channel. It is called Smosh. It's a very old one. Oh, this clip is called like every high school ever. And this is about the motivation out there. So just a moment. Let me play it for you. That's right. It will be really short. Dude, I totally failed that test. Are you interested in public relations? Wait, oh, wait. Actually, I was wondering if you knew where the getting famous by doing nothing but looking pretty booth is. What? You know what? Never mind. Bye. I am like freaking out right now. You have a lot of followers. Which means that I love you. Every high school. Every high school ever. Can you please tell me what has happened in the video? What was going on? What did it teach us in that way? So, because you saw like there was some event happening and what was the event what was going on in that part so i hope that you could hear it well because the video was kind of low on the volume out there so welcome welcome for the people who are joining us all right what actually has happened, it was kind of like the proper orientation. You could see that in that way, that 
students were coming and they were tr uh, and there were a lot of people who were like psychologists or the public relation lady or the computer scientist lady and everything and they were trying to motivate the students to do something to talk to them maybe they're interested in something and this is what happens to us we are the teachers we are trying to motivate the students to get interested inside of that thing yeah so however what happened in the end? He tried to tell, like, where is somewhere where I can do nothing and get famous and get popular with? And this is actually sometimes what happens to the heads of our students and to the teenagers, because they are actually into this little pot. They are boiling in that part. They are trying to work it through. Yeah. So, and in general, what we need to understand that what is inside of our of our students heads is absolutely different because someone might think about one thing another guy is having some problems somebody is actually spreading some rumors another one is not aware of what is going on around them and the other girl is just like kind of in love and there and she's experiencing her like puppy love out there so that is why it is extremely crucial to understand what's in their heads and to address that as well. Because without understanding their thoughts and their ideas and what is actually right now is valid for them, we will not get uh, our result to them, we will not get them interested, we will not get them motivated in our lessons in this way. So we actually conducted some anonymous, of course, uh, survey among the students uh, in my school in the school of the of their classmates of my groups out there and in the state schools and there were indicated some of the motivation killers that are actually killing the desire to learn and demotivating our students and there are lots of them and we will talk about only six which are the most generalized one so the first and the second one would be over here the first one would be it's bombing a big test. Especially if we're talking about the teenage classes, we tend to do, ooh, scare them like, this is the snow that is coming. This is exam that is coming. You have to study. Here is your practice. Boom. There is the big pile of papers, as you can see in this classroom. And the people are trying to study, trying to do all the tasks, trying to complete all the exam uh, tasks, like the use of English, maybe reading, writing, and uh, everything. And we're, not, we're just like, it's a practice test. It's like a mock test. Sit still and do nothing and do just the test out there. Children are getting demotivated by that because they need to know that they, there will be the test. And from this part comes the second demotivating point. No opportunities to revise. The kids sometimes do not feel that they are uh, evaluated enough, that they need to look through their notes maybe. Maybe they need to rethink about that the grammar structure. They need to go through this and they need to go through that. Just extra minute or something even though we say like this is in ukrainian like right so they will still need this little time even this illusion of this little time so that they revise so they the tool that we could boost their self-esteem so that they could understand that they can do that and they can work with this big test however we need again to warn them and we need to give them some opportunity to revise apart from you know like all the revision activities in the book they do not consider as it, it as a revise uh, as a revised time because they think it's like oh it's just another exercise in the book oh my god it's a test i wasn't ready we didn't revise anything at all just give them that little illusion of this little revision time and there will be less stress and they will be more motivated to do this what i do actually with my big tests out there especially with the teenage groups the ones that are going through the new or maybe who are willing to take some international exams we are holding kind of like the rainbow test it's actually the name that one of the students has given because i have printed the test on different kind of papers i mean like on red yellow there was use of english and blue reading was on yellow uh, the writing was on orange and everything 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 around that and it was kind of like a battle because i had to take my colleagues uh, class as well there was my group of four students and there was another group of five students so there were nine of them and you can actually divide your group whether you have eight 20 25 students like in two or three groups or four even groups and give them out the tests 
and they can do work in groups together and then like you have the time limit of 10 minutes 10 minutes for use of english task and they all are working together they are cooperating together they are trying that and they are actually burned up they are not getting demotivated oh my god that is another zeno test and this is kind of like the thing that if you have watched ira maximova's uh, webinar she was also holding kind of like Zeno battles kind of like this way as well and it's really great for them it boosts them and they stop being afraid of those tasks that they might get in their tests but these are just again two things that are demotivating students about the other solutions we will talk a little bit later today so the other two is actually about too much lecturing when the teacher talks too much is ttt you remember that teacher talking time it should be eliminated especially when we are trying we think like it would be easier and it would be shorter that we tell them everything and they will understand us and we will think that it will be much quicker no it's better to go through some kind of a guided discovery thing or maybe just like eliciting some information from them but not giving too much lecture not giving too much time of your talking it's good that you're talking but the point of the lesson is that they must be talking that they must be working with each other that they must be trying to understand what is going on and from this actually also comes a little thing which is poor understanding poor understanding it's not that you are a bad teacher maybe this specific student is being dyslexic or they are actually the teenagers again they were sitting they were looking at you they were actually into the subject and then suddenly I don't know a cat ran over the window or the fly flew over here and instantly their attention went away because they are still kind of like kids their brain is still working a little bit differently and if that happens they might ask you excuse me can you tell us again what to do of course there are different students but i'm telling about this kind of case so and uh, you will be i just told you haven't you heard and you're using the same words and they're just like completely lost because they haven't heard what to do they didn't understand there and they don't understand why you angry with them so that's why try to use maybe some other words even maybe like to draw something when uh, i tend to explain the grammar structures maybe i'm trying to elicit that from them maybe they are getting maybe they have got this idea like in some subconscious level or something and if i have a student who said like i do not understand what is that we are trying to create our own diagrams or maybe it would be even better when their partner explains that to them and it would be even better because if the student the other student explains that with easy words without those like subject and verb and there is the object and everything so it would be even much better for the brains because they will get it but uh, like they it would sink in much deeper in their head and they will remember hmm it was explanation not from Evgenia it was from Masha oh really I remember Masha drew me some cat over here so it would be much better for this part again poor understanding but it's not because of your uh, we are bad teachers or something like that it's because maybe they dozed out of course there are lazy students who are just sitting like that and they do not want to do anything but then they will ask you some question and you ne will need to explain that i really like the quotation by i think it was einstein but i'm not sure because i have sa uh, seen this on the internet that if you can explain something to a five-year-old like uh, if you can explain something to a five-year-old it means like you understand the subject completely so and that is basically true that's what i think like if you explain something more complicated and if you can explain it easier it would be perfect another two ways to demotivate demotivate your students would be boring content the level of boring in this english class is too high all right so nevertheless we all need to go for sometimes through the drilling process through the uh, boring texts maybe it's the textbook which is long and it has like weird text which is not relatable to their life again so they they are right now in love and they are thinking about saint valentine's day and we have the text in the book about jeans so obviously so they do not want to talk about the clothes or the denim or whatever they are not interested in the history of of, uh, of this kind of clothing but they are interested in something else so this is our job actually to make this lesson 
kind of fun. Maybe we can fool them. Oh, you know, like the genes were used by blah, blah, blah. So, and you can give them some hints, or maybe you can recreate the same text, maybe with just like a reading activity, like compiling reading, so that like everyone is reading only one little paragraph, and then we are combining the story, and maybe then later we will recreate the story in the uh, Toontastic, in the application, so that they would be going like the little cartoon, and a lot of different stuff. So, Boring content is actually our enemy, but this enemy is needed for us, yes, as a teachers, and we know that sometimes we need to do the boring content, like, again, going through tests, going through drilling part, going through grammar, so for some people it's going through the vocabulary, it's a lot of things out there. So we have to really compile it together really, really well, and it's our job to make the content interesting for them. Another part that is actually like bombing me a lot and I cannot stop telling that we need to understand and we need to respect our kids. And this is actually what all, this, all the teachers are saying, and I'm not the exception, that we need to understand that they want to be realized, they want to be accepted by their words, by their groups and everything. And if you, as a teacher, do not understand them and do not respect them, there might be actually no result at all in that way. As you can see over here, no, Adam, awesome is not an acceptable choice for what you want to be when you grow up. This is the wrong kind of answer that you can get. Uh, you can give to the student. You could say, "Oh, really? You want to be awesome? And what awesome you want to be? Are you want? Do you want to be like a singer, or do you want to be a musician? Do you want to be an artist, or whatever it is there?" So it's a lot of a lot of different parts. How you can change it? How you can work through this? And how you can develop the rapport through working with the kids? Again, understand and respect for them even if they don't deserve that. That's actually really important. However, again, as I told you, I gave to you some kind of little examples of what we can do with the kids and what can be done throughout that. There are some other solutions out here. And the solutions are working through with the people differently. Absolutely. Sorry, I might be a little bit more uh, emotional about that. All right, so we first of all, must get real to the people. So we need to understand, uh, we need to make our students understand that the more real, the more relatable material that you are given to them, the more uh, the, they will be understanding it more in that way. So what I mean by that, so if they see, again, as that example that I had, in the focus for there was the unit four and there is the article about history of jeans and denim clothes. And they do not know where they will be using this kind of stuff. And I told them, like, can you imagine going to the other country and going to the shop and going through some different uh, kinds of jeans? Maybe you would like to do that and this. And they would be like, oh, yeah, kind of like that. But then on the other page, there were some, um, as far as I remember, story about the shopping about different kind of shops, different kind of markets that they can go to. There would be like a flea market, there would be like the black market and stuff like that. And they would be like, oh, I remember there was one thing that happened to me. And they start to tell their stories and they, now they understand that this is kind of th that thing. Of course, there might be a lot of issues for this. For example, get real. Uh, is difficult to do if you're going through a very old book or maybe something like the book is a bit outdated. Uh, so it's just like we need to get real with the kids. We need to explain what they are learning for, why they are learning it for. So what is happening in their in the real life out there in the street, in the shops and everything there. All right. The second one that we're talking about is actually about embracing errors. Everybody is telling about that. I'm, again, no exception for this. Uh, but not just like, oh, good, you made a mistake. Great, good for you. No, not really. So what we actually do with our kids, uh, while they are speaking, for example, in the groups or something, I put down them on the little notebook, like their mistakes maybe that they have made. Sometimes I write them, but I actually, after everything is done, I don't tell who has said that. I'm saying like, all right, I heard something, something like, he go shopping. 
and somebody would be like, he goes, and like, yeah, he goes, and you're put in there. Of course, there are sometimes the bad mistakes out there, like, that you have to put down on the board, because they might, must see that all, and maybe even put it down to their notebooks there. So, uh, what I also do about embracing the errors, like when we're going through some tests, even like those rainbow tests and stuff like this, that uh, we are writing here, uh, so I'm checking the test, and I also write a little bit of the comment, like, oh, well, you used this structure, this was great, but identify this a little bit more, like, or pay attention to this a little bit more, because you need to work on this. Or maybe the person has failed the grammar completely, but they have done the listening part, like, absolutely the best of the best out of the group here. So that's why you will need to just, if you give this little kind of, a sticker even like even to the 16 year old believe me 16 year old boys they really like the stickers like a smiley face or something because they feel like they are appreciated even though they think like haha it's a joke or something but it actually makes them motivated it's not like oh the test okay i can put it somewhere and i don't care about this so that's why just try to embrace the errors in your own way. You know your students, you know who you are working with. And when they are making some mistakes, maybe they, again, lack the understanding, maybe they need a little extra revision time, extra explanation from you or from the peers. And again, the errors are not that uh, crucial. Uh, not, I'm not saying that they are not important. They are not that scary because they come to you to see the mistake and you are there to help them identify it and so that they could correct them not the other teacher not the other person but they must understand it's in their head and that's your job actually how to make that so mistakes are the proof that we are trying that we're working with the third part out there is actually we need to know our students. Um, can you tell me, please, I ask it on every single webinar seminar that I'm running. Who is in the picture that you can see? The girl with the green hair and the other guy just beside her. And also, like, the guy who is danced, uh, down there. What are those people doing? What are their careers? Do you know anything about that? So just, like, a little thing for you. Because these guys are pretty popular among the teens, among the different kind of, uh, I would say, layers of community, layers of society. So those two with the Grammys would be Billie Eilish, a singer, and her brother, her producer. Yes, so Billie Eilish was there. The lowerish part, it was a little kid over there. There is a Pe PewDiePie who quit the uh, YouTube for a month. Now he's back again. He's uh, observing memes and everything. You need to know what they are interested in. Yes, and the other one would be like, the, it, yes, so the PewDiePie, he was actually playing the games. And you can see like at the top, there is a Minecraft. With Minecraft, actually, you can do anything out there. There is a whole big... Uh, stem production for our studies like using the minecraft and stuff like that and you need to know what is inside of their heads for this part because if they are really into music and they are really into billy eilish why not to take one of your last songs for example to warm up the class before like talking about i know the structure should have yes i should have known it was like the first one thank you thank you so much yes i'm not saying that these are like the things that you need to know these are the things that are my students interested in maybe your students are interested i don't know in chess maybe they are interested in uh, gymnastics or maybe someone is interested more in kind of dance or performance and the other person is interested in it maybe some someone is interested in history and providing the like videos on history so there are lots of that there uh, so the other guys are there a lot again so just try to ask them uh, on one of the webinars somebody told like when I asked like how do you, you get to know what your students interested in somebody told they tell it your, uh, themselves and they actually do they even get the stickers they show in their day books and the kids and actually the people are like the most selfish 
people in the world because they want that the people are talking about them mostly and they will show like oh take a look on this notebook i have got this and this and that and uh, you will be all like oh really and the other guy yeah and i've been to the concert of that and that and that and there will be already kind of the discussion with these guys and they will be going through and working through that so that is fine with that just please do mind that you must know your students you must know the audience you're talking to uh, again these are just the examples the other trends you can find like how to pop the pop culture into your classroom in my other webinar out there it's also here on now rock all right so the fourth step is actually giving them a choice there is such an interesting psychological trap which is um called like controlled choice or choice without a choice so when you need to go through some boring uh, activities for example for mixed conditionals and you have a lot of a lot of uh, a big pack of uh, exercises that you need to complete with and they will be like oh, again another paper black and white and stuff like that what you might do you might tell them like what should we do first the first exercise on the fifth and they will be instantly oh i have a choice i'm in the control i'm in control of the lesson and they will be like okay the fifth however you will eventually do the first one as well you can also tell them like all right who wants to be the teacher right now i okay decide what do we do do we do this activity or do we do the listening activity do we do the writing or do we do the listening most of them would go for listening and actually so the, you will give them the listening and then based on that you will work on the vocabulary blah, 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 blah. and eventually you will give them this writing as a homework or vice versa it really depends on the students out there but to give them the sense of control to give them the sense that they are valued that they can work through that they can do that is really really amazing one so you will be surprised how much it boosts them and actually it it sounds really simple right like what do we do now this or that can you tell what about the homework do you want two exercises or three exercises and you will see like they will be like oh two and you will be like ha 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 i was meaning to give them two exercises not the three but again they will be kind of fooled but uh, you will give them you will get to the result that you need in this way also given the choice about the homework uh, recently i think yesterday i have stumbled upon the idea of giving the homework through QR, through QR codes you can generate them really easily my favorite uh, website is QR code monkey or something like that and QR code generator monkey so google it like this part and there you can create several and for example in one QR code you need to prepare a project about about your topic so in the second cure code do five exercises there and there and there in the third one you're doing this and this and this for the homework one of them might be something like you do nothing or you choose or you do everything out of all the cure codes or something it actually really makes it like interesting quest for them or some interesting kind of test that they really really want to do in that way okay so just again but you're it is the illusion of the choice but you are giving them the choice to do it and they are reinforced to understand that okay i can do something on my own i'm in control of myself because they need to feel that control they need to feel that security here okay up to the fifth point uh even if we are talking about bigger classrooms like 15 people 20 people uh, eight people or something like that i will mostly work with the groups maximum to 10 people but um we need to give the teenagers a break i really uh, sometimes uh, from time to time i generate different kind of breaks but my favorite one and it's like the easiest one is the breathing technique and actually the kind of meditation to the nice music for 30 seconds it won't take much i have the lessons of hour and a half with the kids however if you are working with the kids like for 45 minutes i really do recommend you to take just like one little minute for it it won't take much it won't uh, hurt you at all so just try the first lesson they will be like oh what do we do? why are we breathing why is it this music wrong going on but this one is actually really nice uh, technique for their brain to recharge a little bit so for instance 
you because we all do a lot of activities like stirring and like coming, stirring and coming. So you know like this structure of the lesson, I'm pretty sure in that. However, after stirring activity and after coming activity, they need just a little break to switch. And for you it will be actually like a little uh charm as well because you will see like it will be easier to switch from one topic to another it will be more e much easier transition to this part that's why cut them a break again for one little minute for the teenagers it actually would also work like this usual head shoulders knees and toes just like for maybe one time or two times out there the other time it would be something like stand together and do some team building activity maybe like put the if you allow your students to touch everyone or like maybe someone is not very comfortable with that so like put their hands on the shoulders of each other and sit down in the circle and do that like one or two sit-ups it actually makes good uh, sense for them and for their brain activity out here all right this is one part here another part is actually encourage collaboration and participation so of course we are working in the communicative uh, i work in the communicative methodics and i think like everyone is doing that however sometimes we forget that people need to work with different people uh, and i really want to encourage you to uh, like inspire them to work together to participate to maybe to make their way out there why because sometimes, you know, like when you are even given out the projects out here, they want to do some more. They want to show that they are more, there is more to that. They want to participate in this, in that, and in that uh, project, and in that project, and they want to add. And for instance, we had in prime time too, there was a topic about the monsters, and every, uh, every pair got like kind of a monster. So, and one of them got like a troll, and they needed to find like a legend about that, to retell it, and to create something. And the pair of ladies, they have asked me can we do two projects and I'm like but you need to work together yes yes we will work together but for this lesson you will bring this one for the next that one they wanted to create a project about a unicorn as well so that they everyone could see and they created a unicorn out there with different like uh, like the picture of it with different ton, ton facts about it and you should encourage that you shouldn't no you got the troll go away not of course there was another collaboration from uh, the older kids they were like oh you know like you did like this exam kind of part can we do something for the camp that you're running in school and we're like yes what do you want oh i can dance and i can create the presentations can we run some sessions for the kids like this so don't cut it off just try to encourage them of course it is some extra work and it's like extra curricula but it will pay off i really promise you that to the seventh point i really want you to not to forget that we must learn and we must teach our students to work in the principle of think analyze and do and not just sit and do the test and get away from here and get the mark because a lot of uh, kids especially the teenagers they forget about the principle of thinking analyzing and doing they're just already like the automatic machines, like robots. They're doing the test, they're writing down the essay. Sometimes it's like completely automatic, but they need to realize what they are doing. And that's again our purpose, what we are for. And when we are working through the different um, kind of like activities again like writing and everything so they are really automatic but they need to think they need to realize again so they need to be sentient about what they are doing not just like again getting another mark and getting the no 200 and everything they hear okay this is another point the eighth point, however, is actually setting the goals together. I do it actually every two months, or maybe like it, it depends on the group, depends on the people out there, and we are creating some specific goals. So what it means, like we are sitting there and we talk about what they need together. Not just like, I need to speak more, I need a little bit more grammar, I need a little bit more vocabulary. You need to say exactly what we will be doing. So you open up the book where you're going through and you say, aha, so there will be the unit about the food and we will be talking about this, that and that. There will be grammar this, that and that. And you will tell like, this will be on your mark, this will be on your grade, this will be over here. 
and they will tell you, oh, and we will do the Quizlet for this, and we will do that for this, and we will do some other game for this, and we will do the project, and blah, blah, blah. So you're combining it together. It, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes, actually. But when you're given, this is something like a little worksheet that you can find on the internet it's like smart goals our goals are smart you can use this kind of art what i personally do in my uh, kind of stuff is actually uh, we're creating the checklist it's much easier and it actually like when we have done this they are just sticking it off they're sticking them into their notebooks and working through that part here uh, all right, to that question we will come back. So, Taras, so thank you for this one. It's a very good one, but we will get to it. So, now, the last point, but not the least, to me it's like the most important one out of all, is actually you need to find the role model for the kids. It might be that Billie Eilish, it might be that uh, Phineas Guy, it might be PewDiePie, it might be their mom, it might be their teacher of, I don't know, of history or whatever. But I really do encourage you to become the role model that, uh, for, the, uh, for them yourself. I'll give it to you a little example of that. Um, from my personal experience, I have a wonderful teacher in school. She's still working in my school and she taught me like everything in English. She introduced me to English and everything. But being a teenager in 10th grade, I was kind of reluctant to the studies. I didn't want to study, I wanted to go to Kavayan, I wanted to go to dancing, and uh, it happened that my dancing practice was combining with, uh, like, was interfering to my schedule of English. And I stopped coming to English, like, I started to skip the lessons, like, but it's really true. Uh, what my teacher has told me is actually, like, you won't succeed with this kind of attitude. This was actually, right now I think like it's pretty reasonable thing that what she has told me. Uh, however, being a teenager, I thought like, whatever, I don't need English for that. I don't want that at all. So that's why I stopped like for about a month, I stopped going to English at all. So that's why I want you to think, really to think about what you needed as a, uh, as a teenager to hear. So become a model that you needed when you were younger. Uh, of course, after a month that uh, this woman had told me that uh, I started to come again to the lessons because my brain started to work and I'm like, how can I succeed without English at all? So I still, like, I rescheduled my dance practices then. So, but still, it was like that moment that I still do remember that, that those words are kind of reasonable. But you should think about what you would tell to your student. So, like, in this, the same situation. So, put yourself into their shoes in this way. And uh, there are a lot of different, actually, speeches from different... Uh, uh, talkers and teachers, there is one teacher that actually impressed me, like I watched her video like when I still was in university, it was Rita Pearson, and her talk was about kids don't learn from people they don't like. I have never understood it, to be honest, until I started to work with the teens, until I started to work with the kids out there. Because as long as you're interesting, you will be listened to. As long as you're doing something for your professional development, you will be, uh, there will be students, they will teach, uh, they will be learning from you, you will be able to teach. And that is my point. So since you're all here this Saturday, you're doing your something good for yourself, you're developing, you're reading, you're listening, you're doing some stuff. So you're already like the one who can develop their goals, who can help them in everything. So please don't hesitate, just don't stop in your continuous professional development, don't stop in your studies, just go on and everything is gonna be fine there. So I may sound a little bit like, you know, like the coach, just do it and everything, but there are some other points that like, we can work on over here. So before we proceed to the questions, please do find your phones. If you have the Viber, you can go through the Viber and scan the QR code. Uh, 
as lo uh, after you scan it, I'll send you several articles and some of my su other suggestions of what you can do while you are trying to motivate the students. Also some good articles, some good books and everything. Will, it will take just about like a minute of your time and then we can proceed to the questions. So I'll wait just again for a minute and then we will proceed to that. Because this, again, was generated on the website, which is called QR Code Monkey Generator. I like it because there you can fill in some additional uh, icons. For example, if you want to make it a Facebook icon, there can, you can put the F in there. There could be another one. So there are loads of that. So please do fill in the form. There are only three questions to that one. So please do try to complete that. Um, it, it really means the world to me because, you know, like, I really like this kind of uh, feedback forms because I can collect the emails and I can send you the specific information about what actually impressed me, who have I listened to. And as long as you finished, yes, yeah, so please do type in your questions. I will be gladly answer to them because um, motivation is... To be honest, it's kind of underrated, in my opinion. Uh, it actually doesn't give us um, a lot of... It's like, you need to motivate your students, tick. You need to talk to your students, tick. But there are not much, actually, like practical part in that one. Okay, there was a good question. Do you use eTwinning or other platforms or for of international projects to develop students' motivation through live communication with foreign peers? Actually, eTwinning is amazing part there. If you have the opportunity, please do go for it. I haven't used like the eTwinning like specific like official materials, but I have met there the uh, on the. Facebook, there is a group something like Creative English Teachers or something like that, and there are a lot of different teachers from America, they are from Morocco, from Turkey, from different things, and we already talked with the people who were in California, so there was just like, but it was so big class, you know, like for me it was like a bit overwhelming, but we tried it, and I really tell you, like, this motivates them a lot. Um, with the teenagers, we also tried post-crossing, uh, we were creating the postcards, putting the stamps, and they will forever remember how to write a letter. Boom! The structure has worked out there. Yeah, so, and uh, I think like the live communication through Skype through, through the it winning is a great idea. There are so many, so much materials about that, so please do work on that if you have the opportunity. If you don't, to be honest, just like try to imagine, you can work with, not only with some other countries, but you can work with some other schools. So I know know that some Kiev schools are working, for example, with Khmelnytsky and they are exchanging the uh, letters, for instance, or they have video conferences just only in English with that, for, uh, with that part in it. So, yeah, it's, it really helps. And um, if you have seen my previous webinar, I was talking about project-based learning. It's one of them. And uh, Please do try implement the projects there as well. So, of course, there are a lot more ideas. Uh, please, again, do fill in this feedback form. And I will send you a few more ideas. And, of course, I would like to hear your suggestions. How, maybe how do you motivate your students? Maybe something works precisely for that, that student, you know? I'm really interested to hear your, like, maybe stories or maybe something like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's... It means a word to me, yes. Because, <sighs> again, uh, the students are different. The teens are different. And they have different things in their heads. Yeah. And uh, also, one of my other uh, colleagues, she actually told a lot about the... Um, putting like good environment into the classroom. I personally agree with that. However, for me, it is a little bit hard to keep up. For example, putting up the fresh memes around the board or maybe like creating the classroom language posters using this kind of boards, uh, like memes again. For me, it's a bit, uh, again, time consuming. However, if you can do that, please do and it will work perfectly for you. Right. 
On this wonderful note, I think that we are going to stop with you. I was really happy to have you all here. You have two more wonderful lectures, so please don't skip on that, especially like the, sec the second one is more about psychology, the third one is about the making the English as a tool, and that's what it is actually, so the tool to understand each other for that, po uh, for that part. Oh, you're welcome, of course. I, as long as you're here, I will be motivated there. So, thank you so much for coming. Again, wait for the next speaker please and if you need any uh, more suggestions find me Yevhenia Hontar in Facebook or on the emails or anything out there so see you soon guys